Hi, I'm E.G. Lewis and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, I bid you welcome. Uh, enter freely and leave some of the happiness you bring with you behind. And uh, I hope I didn't mess up that quote because I'm doing it from memory. So um, if you know that quote, please comment it down below. Um, so a couple things today. We're going to do a double review, but also we're playing with the lighting again because guess what? I got a new halo today. So I got a new halo light. This is, this one's big. I mean, let's see. That's just the sides of it. This is like a 12 inch one. My original one, you could fit inside this one and the one that recently, you know, the one that died that doesn't work at all. You could fit that one inside that one. So it's just like, huh, I went from, you know, uh, to uh, to uh. So anyway, but we're gonna do a double review and it's also vampire related. And I think these are all technically audible originals. One of them is an audible original drama, so it's not an actual audio book, it's an audio drama, kind of like, you know, old time radio plays. But we've done audio dramas on this channel before, Dark Shadows ones especially. And the other one is an audio book, but I think the audio book is exclusive to Audible. But anyway, I'm not affiliated with Audible, by the way. I'm not affiliated with anybody at all. Uh, just getting that out there. So the first one is the most recent, and this is Impact Winter Season 3. Now, of course, uh, a few months back, what was it, April? I think it was April. I talked about Season 2, which had come out last year. I wasn't expecting Season 3 to come out so soon after talking about Season 2. So I'm glad I did, because I still had it fairly fresh in my mind. Compared to Season 1, that had been a bit. Uh, had been, I think, two years ago. Or... Two years ago when it came out, I think. Anyway, so a new season just came out in July, and I just listened to it literally the other day when I'm filming this, because this is still really early in August. Like, the date is the 3rd when we're here. So um, I just listened to it the other day, so late in the month. So when did it come out? About the middle of July. So it was still really new when I listened to it. Okay, so this one picks up not long after the events of season two ends with that very shocking ending. I'm going to try and keep spoilers to a very minimum, so I'm going to be very vague with this. Not long after that very shocking conclusion that we got at season two, which granted, I kind of, you kind of see coming, but it's that it's still kind of a shock that it happens. And this one picks up with that, the aftermath, and there's some more dangerous games going on for the characters. Darcy in her new role as uh, the queen. So yeah, that's a spoiler there. Um, also, Hope, her sister, uh, dealing with the aftermath of what she witnessed at the ending of season two. But like I said, uh, there's, there's some new dangerous games going on and some new plots and stuff. There's a few things in this that I thought were a little bit convenient, but they did have a purpose. I just feel like it was kind of introduced rather conveniently and then also kind of swept under the rug conveniently. So I had a little bit of a problem with that. And I think that kind of dropped my rating down just a little bit. This season was kind of exciting. It was very twisted and I liked that. Uh, there is a heart-wrenching moment that happens about midway, maybe just, just past the midway point. And I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. It was another one of those things that you kind of saw it coming and it was kind of hinted at that something similar was going to happen with it. But it, that doesn't take away from the, you know, kind of gut wrenchingness of it. So um, there's that. Then there's the ending, which opens it up for another season. Spoiler alert. I was really hoping that season three would be the conclusion of the storyline and maybe they do something new if they wanted to continue it. No. No, it, it's it's picking up with another season. I'm hoping that it will conclude it now, and if they want to continue, they'll start something new, but, you know, who knows. Um, there's really cool stuff that happens, uh, and I like how it kind of takes on a bit of a twist on mythology. Um, so I thought that was really cool. So, But uh, where did I get this one? I gave it four stars. It would have gotten probably four and a half to five, because I did really enjoy it. There was some 
bits of it that I, I think it improved upon from season two. Some bits not as much that were kind of on the same par. But uh, I liked especially these new characters. We, we get to meet the council of, you know, the really high vampires and stuff. Um, yeah, and then... I feel like I'm repeating myself, <laughs> which I am. The twists. There, I, I think the twist really helped it, and it just added to the drama. There were some things that I'm like, is that going on? I don't know. I feel kind of iffy, and then I'm like, oh, okay. So, yes, I did really enjoy this, and I am looking forward to season four. Um, don't know what I'm going to get to, because I doubt I'll be able to listen to it when it comes out. So, who knows, but we'll see. But, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. Okay, my next one is, uh, it's my first Karina Holly book, and I first heard of Karina Holly from, uh, D.L. Tillery, The Mistress of Horror. Uh, she read a couple of her books for the, uh, Gothic Arts Reading Challenge, so it kind of prompted me into, uh, checking this out. And this was free on Audible, so I thought, you know, why not? So this is Black Sunshine. It's the first book in the Dark Eyes series. There are three books in the series, but I think only books one and two are uh continuations of each other book three i think is its own thing kind of standalone based around some characters literally from uh the first book but un but pretty much unrelated to the plot so i'm gonna go ahead and just read the synopsis because it's been a little bit and i'm gonna say some things afterwards about it all lenore warwick wants for her 21st birthday is to hang out with her friends Finish her second year at Berkeley with flying colors and maybe catch the eye of a hot musician playing a show at a club that she can now legally get into. Unfortunately, fate has other plans for her. A week before her birthday, she's kidnapped by the brooding and dangerous stranger with cold eyes and a lethal touch who has been stalking her on San Francisco's fog-shrouded streets. Absalom... Uh, Salon. Stravig? I, I can't remember how his last name is pronounced, um, but it's not pronounced, it's not said a lot in the book. Isn't your average criminal, though? He's a centuries-old vampire who's caught between wanting to kill Lenore and wanting to save her. You see, Lenore, too, is a vampire. She just doesn't know it yet. Taken by a pair of vampire slayers when she was just an infant, Lenore was raised, never knowing her true nature. All Lenore knows is that she has normal parents who love her, that she is exceptionally smart, and she's squeamish around blood. But once she turns 21, she'll fully turn into a vampire, and Salon hopes he'll be there to guide her, opening her eyes to her deepest hunger both sexual and otherwise. But this turn can't be kept a secret. Soon both slayers and vampires are hunting Lenore, with only Salon and his unpredictable uh, motley crew of vampires to save her, if they don't kill her first. Uh, now, I'm going to say this right now. This honestly is the first time me actually reading the synopsis, because this is when I kind of went in blind. I knew it was a vampire story, but I didn't know when I started that it was going to be witches and vampire slayers. And, like, the twist with Lenore, I didn't even know what, what was exactly coming with it. Because when the book starts off, it starts off back when she's a child and they first find her. You know she's special because there's uh, this weird thing that happens when they discover her. But you don't fully know what that's going to mean till later in the book, and there is a twist with it. Not only is she a vampire, there's more to it than that. She's a, a special case. And actually, Ethan Salon is kind of a special case, and you'll learn a little bit more about him. The vampires in this story are kind of unique. It plays on tropes of the traditional vampire, and even some of the older th stuff with vampires that you don't see much anymore. Um that I kind of like, and I personally like in my vampire lore some of that older stuff that kind of had dropped away, I would say after Dracula started becoming popular. You didn't see as much of this. Some of the stuff you'll see in like Carmilla and the vampire by John William Polidori. Um, I think in even a little bit of Varney. I haven't finished Varney. That's one of those things. I don't know if I'm going to finish that tome because uh, 
Yeah, we can talk about that another time. <laughs> um, that's something that I have kind of shelved for now, but it's been a couple of years since I shelved it for now, and I just don't know if I'm going to return to it. But I really did like kind of the vampire lore with this, and the mixture of witches, and a different way of doing slayers. So I thought that was unique. Okay, I want to stop here for a moment and talk about what Black Sunshine is. If you don't want to know, you want to go in completely blind about it, um, skip this whole spot right here and you can come back into it. I won't talk more about it. So Black Sunshine is um, this power that vampires have where they can like open a door and walk like between worlds in a way. I, I'm not explaining this very well. But they can create like a door and like step out of like our typical reality and travel to a different spot, open another door and step. It's almost like astral projection, but you're physically going into this like between world and then you can step out of it in a completely different location and like seconds have passed. So you can like travel halfway across the city, like you're like at this party or whatnot and you can leave it and go to your home and like literally like seconds have passed and you like basically like appear out of almost nowhere so i thought that was really cool okay now there are a few little downsides about this book though that um i wish hadn't been done this book uh its plot is very loose it's very much about exploring the uh the world building and the characterizations, which is completely fine. I liked that actually, but it doesn't have a, a, there's an underlying plot that doesn't fully get resolved. There's a few plots that don't fully get resolved and they're setting things up, I think for book two, which some people have problems with. I did have a little bit of a problem with that, which uh, otherwise I think I would have rated this one higher too. So if you don't mind that, I think you'll very much enjoy it. Uh, rather than that, I mean, exploring this world was really cool, and I think that had a big impact on why I liked it. This is also considered to be kind of a dark romance, but um, and I haven't read much dark romance, but I think this is also considered to be very light, so you might want to check triggers on this one. But from what I understand about dark romance is uh, what makes this one very tame, because it doesn't go into a lot of those really dark, sketchy, iffy issues that dark romance can go into. Um, it just, it's like a, like, I, maybe kind of like training wheels to ease you into dark romance, maybe. But um, there are some moments that you're, you might want to, you know, just be a little bit aware of. So I would check triggers with this. So um, taking that all in mind, I gave this one four stars. I did really enjoy it. I really enjoyed the writing. I wish, though, that it had had a little bit more of a main plot, you know, main problem they were working toward in this book. Um, but I just feel like those little bits are a little bit unresolved. There is a villain they do go up against, but I feel like it's like a mini boss and the big boss is coming in book two. So, um, yeah, that, that's why I knocked the rating down, but I, I still really greatly enjoyed this book. It was very, very atmospheric. And also, I really liked that it made a bunch of Edgar Allan Poe references. Lenore, of course, being, you know, a reference. There's also a character in there whose name is Poe. And I can't remember. Like I said, it's been a bit. I'm thinking there was some other references to Edgar Allan Poe in it. But um, I did greatly enjoy it, even with the problems that I had personally with the book itself. So anyway, that is my double review. And I hope you enjoy the lighting. I don't know how well it really does show up on me, but it's kind of a cotton candy. We're doing kind of a purple and kind of a fuchsia-y pink color. Anyway, I thought it might be good for uh, these two vampire-inclined audios. And, uh, you know, uh, a little bit atmospheric. But anyway, that is my review. Uh, until next time, stay safe, stay spooky, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.